Hello everybody and welcome to part 7 in this Lua tutorial series. Um, now in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at functions um, and how they are useful to... The, basically they allow you to take the bits of code that would normally be insanely repetitive and it allows you to make them easier. So the best way I could describe this is let's say for example you was making coffee. Now, every time you had to go to the kitchen, you would have to do the same process over and over again every time you made that coffee. But instead, somebody goes out and invents a coffee maker, and then you just simply press two buttons, and you have your coffee, right? That's what a function is. Instead of having to do code that's very similar over and over and over again, you can just create one function that will allow you to reuse code. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just show you an example Um of the best way I can describe it. Uh, so to create a function, you just go ahead and write function. Um, whoops, I do apologize about that. Function, you give it a name. It could be any name, as long as it's not the same as another name. Um, followed by an open and close bracket and an end, okay? So this tells Lua that you're making a function. This is the function name. Uh, these are the function parameters, which for now, we're not gonna do. Just leave them like that. Uh, and an end defines the end of that function. So in this function, I'm going to go ahead and do print hello world. Okay. Now, what what can I do? Like when I run this program now, nothing is going to happen. You know what I mean? It's not going to print anything out on the screen. Um, and that's because functions don't actually do anything unless you tell them to. So the way how we can tell it to, and remember, you have to create a function first before you can use it. Um, so we can go ahead and just type the name of our function, any name, followed by the parameters like that. And this is going to call the function. And basically what this does is say your program runs, it's going to encounter this line, it's going to jump up, run all of the code, and once it's finished running the code, it's going to jump back down to where it left off and it's going to continue. So now when we run it, as you can see, hello world gets printed in our console. Now, that's great, but it's pointless to do it for print hello world when we could just simply write that ourselves, right? So let's take a look at parameters. Now, this may get a little complicated for some of you, but in our function name, there's these brackets, right? And inside here, we could type a name of a variable, okay? I'll just type the word variable. Now, what this does is this creates a variable that's unique and can only be used inside of this function. So let's say I call any name now, okay? Inside here, I'm going to print out the value of variable. Now, when we call the function, it's going to be nil. And, and for those of you who are wondering what nil means, nil means nothing. It, it doesn't have a value, not even a zero. It's, it's absolutely nothing. Um, in which it does. It has absolutely nothing because we never assigned it a value. But, you know, how do we assign it a value? Well, we do it simply when we call the function. So inside here, we can pass hello world. Now, the value that's inside of these brackets or parentheses is going to be whatever is the value, sorry, the value of the variable is going to be set to whatever was in the parentheses when the function was called. So now when we call it, as you can see, it says hello world. And we could type numbers in here instead. Uh, and it will print out those numbers. Now, we can have multiple parameters. So I could do a comma b. Now what this means is A is uh, a parameter or a variable, then we do a comma and then we do B, so B is also a variable. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna print out whatever A plus B is, right? So now when we call our function, we could do 10 comma 20. Now the way how this is gonna work is A is gonna have the value of 10 and B is gonna have the value of 20. So now when I call this, it's gonna print out 30 because it added 10 and 20. Um, so I hope that that makes sense to some of you. Um, Again, as always, if something doesn't fully make sense, feel free to leave a comment. Um, there's also going to be links in the, the description to websites that could help you on this. Um, but yeah, so let, let's go ahead and, and, and take a look now uh, at return. Now, return is sometimes complicated to some people. But let's say we take a look back at the coffee machine. Now, that coffee machine made your coffee. But imagine if it didn't give you the coffee back. It would be pointless, right? You would be like, well, you know, I might as well make it myself because I'm not actually getting anything from it. And that's where returning comes in useful. So returning is when a function gives data back. So I'm going to say 
in here I make a variable I call sum and I'll set it equal to a plus b so whatever a plus b is and then I'll simply set return sum now something to note is that whenever a function encounters a return statement it will end the function there so if we had this here this would never be called because as soon as it hits this return it's going to end the function there um, so remember that if you call a return, it's going to end the function. We'll look more into return uh, as we go on. But now inside here, I'm going to make a test variable outside. And I'm going to set it equal to, and then I call the function. Now, what this does is when we call any name, when that function returns a value, it represents that value. So if it returns sum, which is 10 plus 20, it's 30. So it returns 30. Then this line here represents the value 30. So test equals 30. I hope that makes sense. So just to prove that, if I go ahead and print out the value of test here, as you can see, we will get uh, 30. And yeah, as I said, I hope that makes sense. Um, that's that's pretty much it for, for now on basic functions. Um, functions can become a lot more advanced. And you also have like meta functions and stuff along those lines. We'll be looking at those in later videos. Um, but I just wanted to get you up to scratch on what a function is and how to return data on it. So I hope you understood. If you didn't, again, like I said earlier, leave a comment. There'll be links in the description to information that will also help you if you're still stuck. Um, I hope you learned something and uh, I'll see you in the vid next video. Thanks for watching.